today is 18 April, uh, almost 10 a.m. Uh, woke up eagerly and uh, today's session is about understanding uh, the manner of how I calculate my the profitability of my read. As you have uh, watched the other videos, uh, I because I buy reads based on use, I want to know what are the variables that can boost the dividends that I can receive as a unit holder and one of these items right, uh, is called the distribution from joint ventures. Initially when I started out investing in REITs, uh, I was also thinking hey, should I buy based on NEV but uh, if you want to invest in REITs, uh, there's something we really need to get it clear, okay? just a sidetrack, uh, you really have to determine whether you're buying based on assets or buying based on use. Uh, my style, I'm buying based on use, so that's why I'm looking for all variables that can boost the distributions that I can receive as a unit holder. And one of it is called the distribution from joint ventures. Okay, so I repeated this whole segment twice. You have to you have to be clear. So then you can continue on watching. Okay. So I own Capital Commercial Trust. I'm a unit holder. Okay. Um, so whenever the annual re uh, annual report comes out, I would invest some time to take a look at it. And right now if you just to let you know there is Yes, there's another screen recording here, right? You see that uh, from this 433907, uh, it is an amount that is uh, shown here, okay? Uh, total return attributable to unit holders, 433907. And you look at all these other figures, right? You will see that the biggest bulk of additions is this thing called the distribution on joint ventures. Thus, I include this amount into the profitability of my REIT. However, there's one thing you have to take note is that uh, as you understand that REITs operate on the model that they have to borrow in order to buy the building, extract you, pass it back as uh, distributions to the unit holder, right? So I want to make sure that for the additional hidden booster or distribution from joint ventures that my REIT has taken, I want to ensure that I am not taking on additional risks. What is the risk I'm referring here to? It is the debt, right? I want to make sure that the numbers that I get, or perhaps at least I understand that the portion that the joint ventures that of the debt they have undertaken, it has been encountered in somewhere in my read. So this video is going to be uh, for my own reference because I want to make sure that I rem remember these lessons and you happen to be watching this video, I hope that this uh, video can uh, add some value to you okay if you're looking uh, into investing in REITs okay so uh, I've in fact I've there was supposed to be a first mind but after that I discovered that I wrote in a lot of things so that uh, my train of thoughts is more uh, more structured and you'll be able to follow so what I've seen right now is that uh, right now I'm at, at page 150 so that is where I want to highlight your attention to the distribution of joint ventures okay then I need to show you to the balance sheet okay because the balance sheet records the uh, liabilities and assets and we will see that at point 8 right there is this thing called the joint ventures right then that brings me to the next point you need to go and read the financial notes point 8 and that is at page 185 okay uh, there is a break, breakdown of the 1.78 billion uh, and it was split into two things called one is the investments and one is the loans. Uh, you need to take note, if you are buying for NEV, depending on how you calculate NEV, right, you are also buying part into of these joint ventures. But since that, since that, that is not my direction, right, NEV is not my direction, I'm looking at use, right, I just want to make sure that the, the hidden booster is not taking on unnecessary uh, amount of that right because that is the Achilles heel of a read so I look at this number called 1.627 billion here this number that I'm highlighting and we'll go down to point oh yeah actually I'm at point 8 already okay so who are the joint ventures right we'll see that uh, Capital Commercial Trust has a joint venture with RCS Trust that's the 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 company or the entity that owns a Raffles City shopping center. So I am also an owner of the shopping mall. 
Okay, but take note, previously, uh, Capital Commercial only had a very small amount of uh, more, but right now as it's going into a merger, right, uh, I'll be recording another video uh, because something has happened at the other side uh, where uh, one of the committee members just shared that uh, Fraser Center Point was being uh, downgraded by SMP. Yeah. So, but anyway, that's the other video. Then we see that it has One George Street, which is the building at One, uh, one George Street. Okay. It is a pure commercial. And you see that the Glory Office Trust and the Glory SR Trust, uh, it is a joint venture with some other partners that CCT has. And these two entities are meant to own the new building called Capital Spring, which is a redevelopment of the Golden Shoe, Golden Shoe Car Park. Okay. So every morning I will just walk past that Golden Shoe Car Park redevelopment. Things are going well, just that right now the COVID-19, even from the view from here, uh, I can see the redevelopment. So things are going kind of right. It's just that right now it is COVID-19, uh, probably the the development has paused for the moment. Okay. So yes, these two glories own the Capital Spring. Then you scroll down and here is where we was, here is where I want to find out. Has the additional debt that the joint ventures have undertaken, is it accounted into the books or into the non-current assets of my REIT? So you see that uh, they have split into four different uh, joint ventures, right? Then they will inform you what is the gross revenue, the expenses and the total return of the year. So hold on to that because that is the profit and loss statement. You look down to the bottom, this part where you see that they have classified the non-current assets, current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities. So the question is, that you may have in mind, Mina, do I have to go in this deep? If you, uh, because I want to be upfront, yes, you need to go into. I understand that there are apps that give you information. So that is for you to do a quick assessment, right? But uh, in a layman example, it's just like myself getting into the marriage, right? I have to understand, before I even get married, I have to understand the partner, uh, my partner, my, my spouse better, right? So, this is the process of understanding my spouse, okay? Because you are, you know, it's like this read, I'll be marrying this read for 65 years because right now, as at this point of recording, I'm 35. I know I lived up to 100, I have 65 years, I intend to hold this as part of a legacy, okay? Uh, so that's why I have all this whole series of videos for the next generation to learn also. Okay, but of course, maybe due to back uh, until then, if the financial reporting standards have changed, maybe things will have changed. But as of now, this is, I've this is the FRS that I've been, uh, recording my videos on. Okay, so you see that the current liabilities, cause borrowings are part of the current liabilities, right? Thus, I need to look at note 5 and note 6 so it says include current financial liabilities excluding trade and other payables and provisions so normally in the liabilities you only have the trade payables or the interest borrowings so you see that these two figures have been accounted here so this means that the net assets of the uh, of that joint venture has taken in, into account the non-current assets which includes the investment properties and also the uh, investment properties under development, uh, the fine notes, uh, okay. Yes, taken into account into the non-current assets, current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities. So I am certain that, okay, Ken, now I just need to look at this number called the net assets. And as you know, uh, for joint ventures, let me scroll back up, you will see that Capital Commercial Trust has a 60, 50, 45, 45 uh, percentage ownership in, as, as of uh, 2019. Then that will mean that they will take 60 from RCS Trust, 50 from OGS LLP, 45 from GOT, 45% from GSRT. And that's how it, you will see down here. Group's interest in net assets of investees at first January. So it's 60% of this, 50% uh, of this, 45% uh, of this, 45% of this. 
However, if you take a calculator, you write out the do the actual calculations, right? There is some uh I think it's up to one million. Yeah, there's some uh difference in the figures. But the key thing is that you need to ensure that the figures are roughly right and not deadly wrong. Right? Cause can be can be rounding errors. Okay. So you see that this figure all added up, right? It has one total. And do you see this part where I'm uh, highlighting right now? Share of total return from the year. It's 60% of this, right? Because Capital Commercial Trust is 60% of the total returns from RCS Trust. Then 11, 11 million uh, because it has 50% of OGS LLP. So you see that going forward for GOT, GRST, right? It will have a corresponding amount of a total return of 115645 from the joint ventures. And if you can recall all the way uh, to the initial build, initial figure, okay, this 95666 was the distributions found at page 150. Do you see here? Okay, so now I know that oh now for this uh additional hidden booster hidden dividend booster from from my read right it has been accounted into my uh, balance my read balance sheet so what do I mean by that so I scroll back down okay so the dividends from the joint venture it has been accounted at the top then this is the part you see the carrying amount of interest of in, in investees at 31st December you see this one six two seven one six two seven two five five. If you scroll back up, it is down here. So the investments is one six two seven two five five, and you see that there's a loan of a uh, around hundred and sixty million, and you get a total figure of one seven eight six one zero five, and that is where it is accounted at our balance sheets. One four eight, ta da! Down here. So this video concludes that hey for this read the additional debt that has been undertaken by joint ventures to give me the additional booster of the hidden hidden dividend booster it has been encountered so as of 18 april 2020 i'm not sure why i took so long after six years just to recalculate this thing but i think i want to record this video once and for all so that i know that okay at least for capital commercial trust right it has the additional debt taken by joint ventures has been accounted into the main balance sheet itself so if you have some reads or you're owning some reads uh, it's all up to you whether you want to find out whether your read has a hidden booster or do you find that you want to go into this tip to understand your spouse so that is what i just wanted to document down in this uh, video uh, thanks for watching in this covid19 period right uh, kindly rest well stay healthy and more importantly stay at home so that the healthcare resources at each of your countries be it where, wherever you're watching this video from uh, is able to handle the, the the situation and if you find that you like to get more details be it whether a checklist or you want to fund the work that I do of course I do have a full-time job I also have my income I also have my dividends for my REITs so the third one is that you find that my work has added some value to you you either can uh, do a do more details is in the description you can either do a donation or you want to share it with your friends and uh, help them out in their REIT investment journey so thank you very much for watching uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.